Maya, you must be free as always, right? My mother-in-law and sister-in-law always push the care of their grandchild onto me without considering our plans. And they just go out. I felt anger building up inside me, and I was left behind at home. How selfish can these people be? I had plans to meet with a friend for the first time in a while. It's terrible that they look down on me just because I'm a housewife. I have to make sure they never take advantage of me again. My name is Maya. I met Hank through my best friend, Laura, and we got married two years ago. I quit my job and now I'm a full-time housewife, but we don't have children yet. We've just moved into a new house a few months ago and we are living peacefully. I love cooking and have been making elaborate dishes almost every day since we moved in. Meeting with Laura and her husband for a delicious meal and good drinks is our weekend delight. But at that time, I didn't realize that the hand of evil that would threaten our peaceful life was approaching. It seems that my parents are getting a divorce. One day, Hank told me with a downcast look. I had heard that they were not on good terms, but I didn't expect them to get divorced. My mother-in-law is a housewife, but she hardly does any housework and mostly orders takeouts or buys ready-made food. And she lives a selfish life of buying whatever she wants without resistance. And she lives a selfish life of buying whatever she wants without restraint. Even after my father-in-law retired, my mother-in-law's spending habits did not change. And despite my father-in-law's warnings to control her spending for the future, she never listened. In the end, my father-in-law got tired of it and filed for divorce. The family home was put up for sale, and my father-in-law moved far away. But it seems that my mother-in-law didn't want to leave her familiar surroundings and rented an apartment near her family home. A few weeks after the divorce, my sister-in-law also got divorced. According to the story, she had been cheating on her husband, and when he found out about it, he asked for a divorce. As a result, she moved in with her mother, with her daughter Sonia, who will soon be three years old. Unfortunately, these two disasters would end up affecting me. Maya, can you come to my house now? I was called out by my mother-in-law after a long time. And without suspecting anything, I headed to her apartment. But that was a mistake. Oh, you finally came. You know, my back has been hurting for a while now. Can you do the laundry, cleaning, and also prepare lunch and dinner? Just as I was surprised by my mother-in-law's sudden request, my sister-in-law Dixie, who lives with her, said this. I also work, so can you take care of my daughter Sonia too? And can you come a little earlier, starting from tomorrow? Ignoring me, my sister-in-law quickly left. My mother-in-law continued to lie on the couch watching TV. I couldn't quite digest the situation and ended up taking care of my niece and fulfilling my mother-in-law's demands. My sister-in-law came back after 6 p.m. that night. I was completely exhausted by the sudden role assignment to me that day. My sister-in-law had said to come a little earlier from tomorrow, but I never imagined if these days would continue every day from now on. A big sigh escaped me due to my depression. Maya, what's wrong? You look tired. Hank. My husband, who came back from work, peered into my face and asked me worriedly. When I told him about today's events, he seemed surprised and apologized to me. What? What are they thinking? Yeah, I never thought they would ask me to do something like this. I thought about contacting you, but I didn't want to disturb your work. 
And also, I had no time to look at my phone because I was with Sonia. I see. Anyway, I'll talk to Mom and Dixie about this, okay? I felt relieved with Hank said that. I thought I could return to my usual life from tomorrow, and my depression quickly lifted. However, when I got out of the bath, Hank's face looked gloomy. I have a bad feeling about this. He noticed me and lowered his head apologetically. I called mom, but she ended up begging and crying on the phone, and Dixie started to get angry, saying she's struggling with work and raising Sonia. I could guess where this was going. Hank continued. So, Maya, I'm really sorry to ask, but can you take care of Sonia until they find a daycare for her? I could see the fatigue on Hank's face. Seeing him like that, I felt like I had no choice but to help him. I decided to accept the offer. For the next few months, I continued to go to my mother-in-law's house. My sister-in-law would drop Sonia off without a care in the world, and my mother-in-law seemed as healthy as ever, making me wonder if her back was really hurting in the first place. What I hated the most was how they looked down on me as a stay-at-home wife. The only comfort I had was that Sonia had grown attached to me. One day. Hank was invited by the company president to play golf, and we had plans to have dinner with Lola and her husband. I was excited to buy ingredients to cook a nice meal for the weekend with good friends. When I returned home, to my surprise, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and Sonia were waiting at the entrance. Hey, Maya, where have you been? You kept us waiting for so long. My sister-in-law shouted at me as soon as she saw me. What's going on? I was surprised by their sudden visit, especially since it was a holiday, and my husband was out. It seemed like they had come to our house when he wasn't around. Just opened the door already. My mother-in-law rushed me and entered the house without permission. Then my sister-in-law spoke up. We were planning to enjoy the holiday today. You're probably free, right, Maya? I have something to do, and Mom is having lunch with her friends, so we're leaving Sonia in your care, okay? After finishing some snacks, they left Sonia with me and went out. Taking care of Sonia while preparing dinner would be difficult. I reluctantly canceled my plan with Lola, and felt sad and angry. While cleaning up the ingredients I had bought, why were they so selfish? Ever since I started going to my in-laws' house, my household chores doubled. Taking care of the child also doubled my physical strength. On weekends, I was often too tired to keep my promise with Lola. Despite all this, I had finally arranged to meet Lola after several months. But now this had happened. I couldn't calm down my irritation, but I managed to take care of Sonia somehow. When Hank returned in the evening, he was surprised to see Sonia. I'm home. Huh? Why is Sonia here? Shh. She just fell asleep, so be quiet. Hank put his hands over his mouth and apologized quietly. You know, when I came back from shopping. Your mom and sister were waiting for me at the entrance, and they left and abandoned Sonia here. I was planning to cook a lot today since Laura and her husband were coming over, but I had to cancel on them. I was looking forward to it. Such a bummer. I vented my anger to him, and Hank also exploded with anger. The director of the nursery was at the golf club today, you know. Huh? Wasn't your sister making a fuss because she got rejected from the nursery? Yeah, but the nursery is now admitting children, and they haven't rejected anyone in the past few months. What does that mean? 
It means that Dixie never even applied to the nursery. We were completely fooled. In the end, the mother-in-law and sister-in-law returned after 7 p.m. Sonia couldn't help but fall asleep on the sofa. What are you guys doing until this late? We agreed to help take care of Sonia only on weekdays until the nursery was arranged. Because mom, you said you couldn't take care of her because of your back pain. And yet, you are pushing Sonia onto us even on weekends. What are you thinking? The usually gentle Hank was angry, so they were clearly intimidated. Oh, Hank, are you back? Hank? This is just a misunderstanding. Maya said she would take care of Sonia, so... I never said anything like that. I shouted out without hesitation, and Hank continued. Dixie, fill out this application right here and now. The documents Hank took out were for the entrance procedures of the nursery. It seemed like my sister-in-law finally realized that everything was exposed in his angry gaze. She snapped and started to get angry, her face turning bright red. Maya doesn't have anything else to do, so it's fine for her to take care of her niece. It's not fair that she lives comfortably in a house as a full-time housewife. Huh, so this is her true nature, I thought to myself. My sister-in-law trembled, either because she was embarrassed that our wrongdoing was exposed, or because she was too jealous of me. Hank was about to get angry again with her response. If you were going to be that irresponsible, then I would cut ties with you. Unexpectedly, it was my mother-in-law who intervened to mediate. Now, let's listen to what Hank has to say. We're also at fault, weren't we? Hank responded mercilessly with a loud voice to his mother. Mom, you're really lying about your back pain, aren't you? You seem to have enough energy to move around. So why don't you work a little? My mother-in-law scolded, shrugged her shoulders. And next to her, my sister-in-law, who had given up, began writing the documents that Hank had given her. Here, I filled it out. Happy? She said, slamming the finishing documents on the desk, and they all left. Soon after, it was decided that my niece would start attending the nursery the following month. Thanks to that, I was able to return to my normal daily life and have dinner with Laura and her husband. It was around that time that my husband's transfer to Seattle came up suddenly. I was lost in thought thinking that it was going to be busy with the move to Seattle. Three months later, I received a late night phone call and it was my sister-in-law on a video call. I was confused when I saw the background on the screen. My sister-in-law Dixie greeted me with a loud annoying voice. Hey Maya, can you come back home soon? I still couldn't quite understand what was happening. And then... There was a loud crash on the other end of the line. Oops, sorry about that. Looks like Sonia broke a vase in the living room. But since it was your precious niece, you'll forgive her, won't you? And she held up the broken vase to show it to the screen. W wait, are you guys really in that house right now? Yeah, it's been a while since we last visited. I mean, how did you get into the house? Well, I borrowed the key and made a spear last time I was here. I couldn't believe that they had gone to such length. I blamed myself for not realizing that my keys had been stolen. It's been a while since we last visited your house, and it seems like Sonia's getting too excited. Come to think of it, we didn't have this face before, did we? Oh, is it new? I'm sorry she broke it so soon. <laughs> As she apologized, it was evident that she didn't feel remorseful at all. 
please leave right now. Well, I can't do that. After all, we came here to get some money from you. Money? I exclaimed in surprise at my sister in law's words. If Sonia asked you for money, you wouldn't be able to refuse, right? At that moment, Sonia appeared on the screen. I could see my mother in law, who was standing next to her, whispering, say it as we rehearsed in a low voice. Auntie Maya, Sonia wants an allowance. Sonia looked at me with tears in her eyes, and she muttered in a barely audible voice. Seeing her like that, my fist trembled with anger. How could they ask a small child for money like this? My sister in law provocatively called out to me again. See? This is what Sonia is saying. So please give us some money. By the way, where are you right now? Hurry up and come back. I'm in Seattle. What? Seattle? Yes, so I can't lend you any money. Both my mother in law and my sister in law burst out laughing at my words. <laughs> What a joke! That's not funny at all. If you don't want to give us money, how about giving us some of these Louis Vuitton bags you have stored in your closet? As she said that, my sister in law showed me the closet. I shouted out immediately No! Absolutely do not touch them! Those are my stuff! However, my advice fell on deaf ears as they continued to search for brand name goods one after another. And if it wasn't yours, then whose was it? You think I'd be fooled by such a lie? No, it's all mine. Huh? Who, who, who are you? Standing there was Lola. The truth is, my husband and I had moved to Seattle as planned due to his transfer. We kept it a secret from my in laws to avoid any complications. During our relocation, Laura's family agreed to live in that house, but the key exchange didn't happen due to the sudden move. I asked Hank to contact Lola and told her to call the police right away. After talking to my husband, Lola told my mother in law and sister in law the following The police will be here soon. We will sue you for illegal entry and property damage. Their faces turned pale instantly. Maya, what does this mean? You're lying about the police, right? No, not lying. I warned you not to touch it because it's not mine. My mother in law opened her eyes wide and started blaming my sister in law instead. It's all your fault, Dixie. I never intended for this to happen. Hey, Mom! You were the one to come up with the idea of asking for money. I never thought of that myself. It's all your fault. As an ugly argument began, Hang took my phone from me. Enough already. Shame on you both. You shamelessly make a young child beg for money. How could you do something so despicable? I'm cutting ties with you. Got it? Wait, Hank, hold on a sec. As my mother in law pleaded for mercy, he ignored her and handed me the phone. Then Sonia spoke up, trembling.、Uh, Auntie Maya, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't need allowance. So please don't hate me. Her tearful confession left me with a heavy heart. I could never forgive them for causing such distress to an innocent child. Sonia, we won't hate you. You don't have to worry about that. I spoke in a gentle voice to comfort her. What you did is not forgivable. We have no intention of helping you in any way. As Hank said, we'll be cutting ties with you. Goodbye. Afterward, The police arrived and arrested the two of them. 
Sonia was taken into protective custody and handed over to her father. I planned to visiting her when I returned home. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law were left with a large debt due to the compensation they had to pay for their wrongdoing, as well as unpaid rent and credit card bills. After taken in by the police, they both worked tirelessly from morning until night. Meanwhile, Hank's excellent work at the company led to her decision to stay in Seattle permanently. I pursued my passion for cooking and opened a small restaurant. Lola and her husband planned to visit us during the grand opening. I'm looking forward to a new life and reuniting with my best friends.